or you procreate some little apprentices and you tell them to do it, and then, yeah! Woo! So today's project, I'm over at Chucky's shop. Hey guys! He's the one uh, uh, got his hand stuck to my, my camera slash phone. He bought a, a gooseneck kit. I keep calling it a fifth wheel. If I say fifth wheel in a freaking video, then I mean gooseneck. <laughs> I know the difference, but the model 1111116 or 1117. Um, just like if you guys watch Chucky's video, I'm going to put a link in the description on this. It's an Amazon link, so if you click on it and you buy it, fantastic. I get 5 to 7 percent off of it. I really appreciate it. But just FYI, BMW actually, to me, makes some of the best like towing products. I make some of the best towing hitches, some of the best uh, fifth wheel hitches, the gooseneck kits. When I buy hitches for my trucks, it's always a B&W product. I don't do like the cheap crap, you know, one of the cheapest one, but this is re actually really good stuff. So we're gonna show you how to install it on a 2017-ish <laughs> We can't remember if it's a 17 or 18. I bought this truck last December, and like I told Steve, I know it's bad. I honestly don't remember if this is 2017 or 2018. Same truck, but it's a It, it really is. 17 with a 6.7, four door. Um, new, new body style Ford Super Duty. Brand new, so this is how you install it on there. Yeah. You, you fail miserably. Yeah, this is part where you just start like hacking holes and stuff. That's what I would do. I'm good at this part. I was actually, like Chucky told me, he's like, hey, we need to pull it because it's raining, there's water on the floor. He's like, we need to pull it here. He's like, no, nah, we gotta take the bed off anyway. And he goes, no you don't. I like, oh, Evidently man. not. I watched some, uh, some dudes on YouTube install one of these like two weeks ago when I ordered this kit. And uh, I didn't want to bother watching the video again and taking like 10 minutes to do so. So I figured we'll just spend the entire afternoon out here like hacking and beating on my new truck. There you go. <laughs> I want to be the one to cut the hole in the back though. And I've got a punch up in my truck and I hate Oh it. yeah, I sit there with a chisel. All right, so have you ever inst installed anything like this exact kit? I know you've used uh, their other stuff, but... No, actually I started to. And I was just telling Chucky this story about a, a customer of mine. Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> story time. Where I started to install one of these, and instead of bolting it in, they wanted to weld it in, and I refused oh. to weld it to the frame. So <laughs> I, just, I just walked away and let them do it. And now all of their hitches are all welded to the frames of the truck, which is a terrible idea. Oh, though. yeah. No, don't do that. <laughs> I mean, just for the liability reasons alone, I don't think on most vehicles it's that big of a deal metallurgically. Like, definitely the newer new trucks like this I wouldn't do that on. But, like, you know, anything 04 or prior, if it's a... Ford, I actually read up a little bit on their metallurgy of the frames on the Super Duties, and from what I remember, it was fine, but obviously double check that, because I'm just some it's, random guy on the internet. You can, if you weld it to the frame, will it cause any problems? Maybe not. If that company, because I know what company it is, if they do it, yes, it will cause problems. If it's, if it's a commercial company and you have employees running your trucks around and you weld it and there's ever an accident. You're in trouble. And, and there is a, a strict do not weld the frames of vehicles or 18 wheelers. You know, you're not supposed to weld on 18 wheelers either. You know, yep. so. Yeah. Seriously, guys, don't, don't, <laughs> don't, don't weld these to your truck. It's I mean, it. <laughs> I don't know why it's like, it takes. Look, they even long. give you the friggin' bolts. Yeah. yeah. It comes with the bolts and look, you know what? You could weld this. If the metallurgy of the frame will allow it, you can do it. I could do it. I don't want to talk myself up too much. It's not that complicated, but I don't think the average person who has a MIG welder in their garage has the skills necessary to do so. Then there's the liability that Steven was just talking about. And then there's the fact that, I mean, just why worry about it when they, they give you, look, there's already holes that you just freaking stick it together. Yeah, just, I mean, you're, it's simpler to bolt it. You don't have to worry about any liabilities. Like, hey, I followed the manufacturer's instructions. I put the bolts in, yes. forced them to the specs and everything. But if you go to court over it and be like, well, why'd you weld it? Like, well, I'm a good welder because I've been welding since I was 10 or something. Well, that's not going to impress a jury at all, so, or a judge. But anyway, I digress. Let's punch some holes in something. Yeah. Tangle one goes. So we're setting these out, just kind of figure out how they're supposed to go. Goes in a truck like that, maybe? I think. Put that on top. No, there's only one of those, so it probably goes perpendicular to the frame rails. And there's two of those, so they probably go on them somehow. Perpendicular. More to the day calendar's really working out good for you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's really important to just run these down as tight as possible with the impact before we read the instructions. So that way we like just torque everything down multiple times and just make as big of a mess as humanly possible. This stuff actually does seem extremely heavy duty. It doesn't go like that. So it's like a gusset deal. Yes. Really? 
that. This is an amazingly good design. This one somehow goes up. Oh, that's the, okay, that's the one side and that's the other side. It all makes sense. Steven, I'm so glad you're here. This saves me from like 90 seconds of reading. <laughs> I don't even read, I'm just looking at the pictures. <laughs> you think, you, that's not even a joke. <laughs> you, you know it's mind numbing when even Steve doesn't want to read the instructions. Yeah, I'm like, ah, oh, too much stuff, too confusing. I know, I mean, it's not just me this time. All right, so they go on the inside. More sense. This is amazing! So it like that. Sort of like that. Alright, check it and install it. Beautiful! Steven, yes! It all goes together. I hope. We hope. Does it give like torque specs for anything or just run them down with the impact? Run them down the impact, I guess. I don't see any torque specs. They're probably on there somewhere. Tire foot bounce. Uh, does it say that? Tire wear to 150 and all half inch tire wear to 100 foot pounds. Nice. Which is like just your standard 5 8 bolt torque thread or whatever. So. Yeah, this is good stuff, man. Somebody done went to tractor supply. Yeah. All right, let's try this a second time because I wasn't filming a while ago. But we drilled a four inch hole with the hole saw in the middle right there. We put this bracket in right there. Notice how we got the nut over here on the outside, made it easier. That side, the bolt had to go in through that side nut on the back because of the DEF tank. Make sure we get Chucky's license. This bracket over here, nuts facing out. So these are the outer plates. The four wheel drives and some two wheel drives come with a plate mounted right there. If you guys can see that, but it's that plate right there. So that comes factory, and that's welded to the frame. Factory welded to the frame. Chucky didn't weld it. We don't trust Chucky's welds. No. Um, and we gotta put these brackets up in there, these Legos. So the Legos go in there, then that center section goes in there, and then then we'll be ready to go buy a new trailer, right? Two of them. We got a couple of the brackets on the truck already, put the bolts in it, now this back bar. For lack of a better term. I don't think uh, there is a better term. Yeah, I mean, is it hard. something else? <laughs> um, uh, the outside brackets thread in, like, they bolt onto here. The inside that the fifth wheel deal goes into bolts into there. So they threaded these, and the problem is they powder coated everything. So when I was underneath there trying to jack with it for like five, ten minutes, I couldn't get the freaking bolt. So I pulled it back out, and we're running a tap through it. So we already tapped these. I'm going to tap these center holes. And we're going to make it work. So for those of you at home watching this, be sure and comment about how many times Steven has said fifth wheel instead, or goose, what'd you say? Yeah, fifth wheel fifth instead wheel. of goose nick. <laughs> now, like I said, I know the difference. I just say fifth wheel for whatever diesel mechanic, you know. Yeah. We ain't pulling motor homes. Man, so I think some folks just like unironically find pleasure in life from finding little things like that. I mean, it's oh, obvious, everybody knows what you meant. There's only one hitch here. And technically, not to be that guy, but actually, you can get a uh, fifth wheel son of a gun for this. It like adds, it bolts onto the top of your bed somehow. If I'm smart, I'll remember to Amazon link that in my video. Yeah, and- But I probably forget. Ah! Oh, good for it, right on the concrete. Uh, the other deal is, we're using a, a socket wrench on this. We're not tapping a freaking hole. We're cleaning the threads. Just cleaning the threads, so lo and behold, somebody will rub off our T-handle, whatever. But that's the way that the internet works. We joke about it, but. And I have told you guys in the past that a lot of times in videos, Chucky and I have had this discussion. If you say something stupid in a video, you misnomer something, you get something wrong, it gives people something to like, to like. Would you like to drop this stuff too while you're, just like push it off the bench? Oh yeah. Oh, that went under there, didn't it? I got it. Okay. <laughs> so, if you, if we say something wrong, like a classic example, when Chucky and I were working on his, um, uh, the rear, the bed of the truck that he turned into a trailer, he kept selling, calling it a pencil seal. Pencil, pencil, pencil seal. And he knows the difference. And by that, he means I did it like once or twice in the video. Yeah. <laughs> and I, you know, we talked about it. I was like, you know, it's perfect because people will not read any comments. 
The only thing they'll do is like, it's a pinion steel, not a pencil. Oh man, we went too, too deep. Oh no. So, uh, if any of you guys actually make YouTube videos, I can guarantee you one way to get people to hyper focus on one thing, not another thing, is to intentionally call stuff wrong or, or talk about. It's like reverse trolling. It's trolling the trolls. Just glad that thing still works. Every single time I knock something off, <laughs> I usually get right on the top. Do you um, now? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I have like set up like that. When I drop it, it just not it shears the top of the can off yeah. and like ruins my you know five dot five ten dollar investment. Yeah, that's why I uh, I bought an oil can and made a video about like cutting aerosol cans like this open. Somebody told me the secret to it is like I did it with WD forty cans, but this probably works the same way. Uh, like you put it like this so it's upside down so all the fluid's here and then you cut it here or vice versa. I can't remember though because one way you spray all the gas everywhere and the other way you spray all the fluid everywhere. People say one way is objectively better and like less messy but I don't really. I don't really care. I mean if I knock the, the top of a can off I just go buy another can. I mean if I'm in a bind I'm in doing field repair and I just need a little bit or something then yes I will actually. Impaleify it. Yeah I'll, I'll and what it is like there's propellant in top, there's fluid in the bottom. So you're propelling in the top, you're like, that's what you're trying to expel. So you just leave it that way, spike a hole in the top, let the propellant come out, and then you've got a little liquid to go. But some yeah. things you, you don't want to do that with, like foaming tap cleaner, you don't want to do that with <laughs> because it'll probably, and it's like shaving. It's cream. just going to foam everywhere. It'll spray all the foam out. <laughs> And we're not tapping, we're not cutting metal, but it's still good to use lube. Yeah, it still needs a little lubricant. Dudes, I remember when I was a little kid, probably about 13 or so, I had a pellet gun and I shot a can of um, of that like expanding foam insulation because like it stopped working, the top of it did or whatever, and I shot it, it went and it flew like, I don't know, 10 feet or something. But I thought it was just the coolest thing ever. That is cool. I can't wait till my sons are old enough to sneak in my shop. <laughs> yeah, your expensive stuff too. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Because I don't got no cheap stuff. All right, we should be good. All right, yeah, let's blow that out with the air noozle. Let's see if I can do this one-handed while making second-rate filmings for Steven. Oh, man, do I pee excellence or what? All right, cool. See, the, the trick is Chucky likes to get first-rate filming on his channel, and then sure, I get second-rate on my channel, so mine doesn't go past his. Do we really need to do bird this? I don't really see anything. No, I was thinking, you know, I had a machine that's actually make me some hand counter sinks. I don't know if I've ever showed you guys, nah. but it's a perfect, like, whenever you drill holes, it's got a counter sink that you, you chuck up in, like, a mill or whatever, but you just kind of deburr the top because the, the tops of these have a really sharp little edge, and so it can help to deburr them. I don't think it's going to be that big of a problem, but... We're going to brake cleaner this because otherwise I'm afraid our Loctite isn't going to like seal. I don't know what kind of petroleum tolerance that has, but... I don't know. I don't know what it takes up. I think, you know, a couple thousandths of an inch. I think anything more than three thousandths of an inch, it won't... It doesn't work. Yeah, but like there's oil and stuff in there. And everybody keeps talking about how I'm always spraying stuff all over this thing. For those that don't know, this is a $400 farm truck that's painted in like rubberized undercoating, so I'm not too worried about it. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for trying to bring it to my attention because I know there's folks that are like, man, if that's a Stanley driver or whatever. And I know it's really ugly in person. I know it doesn't really translate on camera that well, but guys, like I said, $400 farm truck. All right, you ready to shove this thing back under yeah. the truck? To answer your question, if there is any oil or grease in the bolt holes, the Loctite will not work. Okay, well, that's good we brake cleaned it. And cut. Now nah, I'm gonna crawl underneath here and show what we did. All right, so we got some of the brackets in there. Let's see if I can set this somewhere so we can actually have some light. So there's a bracket that goes over there. Bracket there. You got this beam that connects across like that. You got that one over there. So we got it all bolted in, all torqued down. The smaller bolts are 100 foot pounds, the bigger bolts are 150. And I'm not going through and showing you guys a step by step and like how to set all this together because I mean, if you want a, a, a how, an actual like how to step by step process, the, the company has their own video. They cover all this stuff, but we're trying to give you like a quick, you know, redneck version 
So next we got to put that plate in. It's over there behind a Fronius. Some yeah, right there. Up in there and tighten it down. Woo! Well, that was a claw. Well, it wasn't a colossal pain. It helps if you read the instructions to put stuff together right the first time. But you know, <laughs> I like installing stuff and then taking it back apart. Really, the only thing I had to take back apart, I had to take that bolt off there um, because I stuck it in before we put that piece in. So I had to take that bolt out and loosen those two bolts over there, and it, it's fine. But so we've installed the center section. We've installed the handle. The center section is really easy to install. There's just some the bolts, three quarter headed bolts you put in there. You torque those down to 100 foot pounds, and the other ones to 100 foot pounds, and that's it. Now we got left. We got to drill some holes through here, up through the floor, for the hooks, and um, that's it. Or excuse me, there, there, and there. Punch some holes through the floor, get those did, and then uh, we're ready for testing. Sure. Pull your lever. Are you ready? Out. Yes. All right. Let it go. The lever. This is how you do it one person. You just, you, that's the lever's normal place. Then you set the thingamajigger on top of it. Then you come to the side of the truck and pull the lever. Or you procreate some little apprentices and you tell them to do it. And then, yeah. Woo. Cool. That is really cool, actually. Like that ball, I know it's just a trailer ball. The machining on that is so cool. They left enough of a texture. So where people would say, oh, they should have seen that more. I think it looks really cool. It's perfectly even. Everything fits how it should. I think they did a good job on that. Yeah, they did. And the kit, um, <clears throat> the kit's a pretty good kit, man. The, the, like I said in Chucky's video, if you guys have seen it, mm -hmm. the most amazing thing about this kit is the fact that you don't have to pull the bed off. It's a multi-piece kit that goes in. And uh, uh, as far as from an engineering standpoint, it was, it's... The most precise they could get away with making it, in yeah, my opinion. Like the, it. all the welds are done, you know, either by robotic or somebody that's really, really good. You know, even according to Chucky, which they're insanely good. I, I've made this this joke with Chucky before. It's like it's something about most welders when they see another weld, they'll pick something little. I done that with nothing half of all. <laughs> <laughs> but even Chucky says that this I, one's uh, van they're very, very good. They're clean. I, like I told Steve, I really think it's a robot. If not, I would be very proud of my work if that was my work. So here's what I really think of the kit. It is a colossal pain and various body parts to put under the truck. That's why I talked Steve into doing it. I'll weld some stuff for him tomorrow. But <laughs> the point is, I think BW or BW or whoever they are has done the best that can possibly be done because the distance between the frame rail and the bottom of the bed is like this far and they've made it so like pieces come in this way, pieces go in that way and they bolt like such. It's like nine pieces. Steve and I have been working on this for like seven hours off and on. Two people. And um, I mean it's a pain to go together. It's lots of little parts and pieces but it fits precisely, it fits cleanly, it's built heavy, it's nicely powder coated so it's not going to rust. Uh, like I said, the welds are clean, everything, it just freaking works. I, they've done the best they could, and I think they've done a great job on putting this together. Yeah, me too, man. Uh, this is the, so this is the first fifth wheel, not fifth wheel, I keep calling it fifth wheel. This is the first gooseneck kit that I've ever uh, installed in a truck. I started to install one one time. At a company I uh, used to deal with, used to work with, <laughs> but the problem with that is when I started doing it, the you know, one of the guys at the uh, the shop or the you know, the manager or whatever came out and I was like, oh no no, we don't need to bolt any of the bolts, we'll just weld it in, weld it solid. And I was like, that's the most retarded thing you can do on this kit. But anyway, pretty neat kit. That's how the uh, uh, those of you guys that don't know your gooseneck trailer. You know, this is for a gooseneck trailer. Pull that lever. So this is in its. Uh, this ball comes out, and there's actually different attachments you can put in here for different sides of the trailer. But in a storage mode, you just set it in. Yank it. And it just locks in, you know, solid. And you got the, that's where your trailer hooks go. Now, the only other thing that we got to hook up is, uh, a, yeah, the electrical pigtail. You know, we're, we'll put it somewhere over here or back in here. We'll mount it somewhere to where the pigtail will plug into it. Um, 
uh, be out of the way and everything. And uh, they make a kit for that. That's a separate video. But I'm going to talk old Chuck and Ducky into buying yeah, one. I'm going to do it. Now, guys, seriously, to elaborate on what Steve said. Now, I talked about this a little bit in my video, but to elaborate on what Steve said about uh, some certain individuals welding these things. Guys, don't weld these together. Uh, there's, there's a number of reasons why it's not a good idea. First and foremost, this is designed to bolt together. It bolts together perfectly. There's no need to screw with it. Uh, and I would wager that bolting this together will actually take less time than like grinding off all the powder coating and welding this. That's reason one. Reason two is liability. I, you know, normally I try not to talk myself up too much and I, I feel like I, I'm a fairly competent welder. I have three years of formal education, five certifications, and now what, like four or five years experience in the field. A whole oh, five. <laughs> I've got like yeah, I know, I know. 28. I was born in 93, what do you want? And if I was to weld this together, I would be a little leery about it. I, I could do it. I would not want to do it. I cannot think of any circumstances where I would do it because of the liability. If, you know, if some guy who owns this truck loads twice as much weight behind it as possible, then like drives it across his 3,000 acre ranch, multiple in, in like the welds fatigue and crack, and then off, guess who gets sued? You do. Whereas before, if you just install it with the bolt to say, look, you know, guy crashed his truck around too much and overloaded it. We put it in like the instructions said, you know what, they should have made it more clear not to do what he did with it, not my problem. And uh, what the heck was the third reason? I don't know, I had a third reason. <laughs> Insert third reason it's here. It's just a pain. It's a, you know, you have to remove the powder coat. And I say, a lot of people say, I don't have to, no, you have to remove powder. Powder coat is extremely difficult to weld through. I mean, I guess you can 60 10 it, but that's an even worse idea than like 7018 or wire feed. But yeah, guys, just freaking bolt the thing together. It's a pain, but it goes together. B&W did a good job of making it fit together. And uh, it's easy for me to say, because Steve was the one under the truck putting it together. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, I guess uh, to elaborate on the, the welding stuff, I'm a big proponent for not welding on the frame of stuff. I don't oh, like yeah. I don't like welding on the frame. You're not supposed to weld on the frame. It's it's a DOT deal. I'm not saying you can't do it and it won't be okay, you know, but most situations most people don't weld it right to the frame. And the frames are designed to flex a lot, a lot more than people think. And when you weld like what most people do with stuff like this is they take the bed off, they get a piece of C channel, they put it over there. To there in that frame rail and they will they box in the frame on each side and they make it just structurally rigid as they possibly can and it, it induces stress into the frame of the vehicle because the frame of the vehicle is freaking designed to flex yeah nothing can flex if you guys weld it so that's the other thing it's a meme everybody oh you're not supposed to weld on trailer frames the reality is on pickups a lot of the time you can now don't do this obviously i'm just saying this for discussion's sake I've looked up repair information for repairing truck frames on a certain generation of late model pickup and up until like a couple years ago, that is literally how the factory tells you to fix them is to weld them with standard, I think 30, 35 thousandths MIG wire. It's not the taboo thing a lot of people think it is. But don't do it anyway because this isn't a good place to weld it because like Steve's saying, nothing can flex. Like I said, there's a tremendous amount of liability and also just freaking bolt the thing together. I would not do it. Even, yeah, yeah, guys, just, just don't, just don't. That's my advice. Not that you asked, though. <laughs> but I hope that, um, um, yeah, I kind of show you how a fifth wheel sit as a uh, our gooseneck kit is installed. And now, one of the reasons I crawled underneath this truck and then did most of the work is um, Chucky's gonna have to tow some stuff for me. It's always really good to know somebody with the fifth wheel and know somebody with trailers that you can call to come ask and do you it. Saying this, I want to be a dick and be like, well, I, I, you don't know anyone with a fifth wheel. <laughs> we talked about this. You don't know anybody with oil in their engines anymore. Oh! <laughs> well, all right, guys, if you need the kit, um, I'll, I'll put a link down in the Amazon deal. As always, if you hit that link, you buy a kit, the channel gets five to seven percent of the sale. FYI, if you hit that link and you go to Amazon and you buy anything for like the next like I think hour or something like that, after you click that link, the, the channel still gets that five to seven percent. Which is odd because I've actually made money on some questionable, some weird sales that came Extremely up. Extremely disturbing things. <laughs> Jeez, some yeah. Some of you guys are some very interesting individuals. 
<laughs> well, that's it. Hit the like button, subscribe, and get, get out and fix something.